वेलकम ऑल माई सेल्फ डॉक्टर अचल कौशिक कंप्यूटर साइंस डिपार्टमेंट भगवान परशुराम इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी टूडेज टॉपिक इज इंट्रोडक्शन टू इनपुट आउटपुट डिवाइसिस नाउ इन द प्रीवियस यूनिट वी हैव डिस्कस द बेसिक बैकग्राउंड ऑफ कंप्यूटर सिस्टम विच इनकॉपरेट्स सी पी यू मेन मेमोरी एंड इनपुट आउटपुट डिवाइसिस वी हैव डिस्कस दैट हाउ सी पी यू इज बींग यूटिलाइज इन टर्म्स ऑफ प्रोसेसिंग डिफरेंट टास्क and then we have discussed that to process these tasks we need the data and information being fetched by from the main memory now thereafter we have discussed that to facilitate these aspects if the memory is not sufficient in the main we may require to go to the peripheral devices or the secondary devices now in this unit we will be discussing about various input and output devices which are actually allows the computer system to interact with the outside world now basic idea is that we have to see that how data is being processed within the system but from where we are going to get the data now to get that data we need to see that there are different devices we categorize them as input devices or output devices basically an input devices used to bring data into the system then that data is being processed and after processing the output devices are used to send that data out of the system now basically input and output devices are being utilized to transform the information to or from the cpu and memory combination now if we just consider very simple example that even to process the data cpu required some information and that information may be fetched from the disk drive and this is nothing but this is again a type of input output operation that means cpu is actually providing a mapping that we call is the memory mapping with the io devices and it, it is very important from the low level computer programming concepts that the implementation of device drivers comes into the picture and they provide the access to the io channels that means the overall concept of understanding uh, understanding of the these peripheral devices these input output devices are related with that how we are going to interact with the system and how the new information can be added to the system so if the simple question is that why computer needs an input device even if there is no input device the system could execute the task but then we would not be able to make changes to those even if we encounter some error we would not be able to fix it out other interactions would not be done without input devices and moreover we know that if we have to change certain information we want to add some information if we even want to create our document we cannot add the text without input devices we cannot make change to the pictures we want to store so for very that reason we would not be able to do though system is able to do but we would not be able to make changes without those input devices that means we need input devices then another question is that why we do require the output devices then in that case we know that computer again can perform any task without even the output devices but then we would not be able to understand that what computer is doing so to know to see what the result is being fetched what the result has been processed by the system for the input given to the system we need the output devices so these concepts were actually being defined with this concept of input device and output device now there is another category we call it io devices now these io devices are again important from the concept that we need to access the data and we need to save the data so these io devices are basically those devices which are performing both input and output on their own no separate device are actually required i mean we know that uh, at at times we need to store the data on the hard drive and then it is being accessed by your computer now without the hard drive the computer could not able to access a operating system and then could not function we have already discussed in the uh, previous unit that there is a very important role of an operating system and that cannot be run directly every time in the main in the general computers through the uh, without the uh, operating system now the concept of operating system is being utilized in terms of converting 
our natural English language into the computer understandable form, binary data. And then once this, this conversion takes place, then CPU will process the task, it will perform the operation, and then to display those output, again, the operating system will facilitate it and convert it to the user readable form. Another example of these IO devices could be the internet access. I mean, we know that there are certain devices, modems or uh, network card, which would be required for the purpose of connectivity to the internet. And without that, we would not be able to do that. So uh, basically, we are bound to use input devices, output devices, and input output devices for several tasks. Now, how we are going to decide that which device is being input device or output device or IO device on whole. So this actually depends on the context for which we are using the device. Now, from ordinary user point of view, anything outside the system box can be taken up as an input or output device. Now, but from a programmer point of view who is looking into the, uh, into the system software part, then for them, anything outside the processor and main memory can be taken up as your input and output devices. And further one step, if we are talking about the engineers who are working on the design of a processor, for them, anything outside the processor can be an input output device. So these categories are basically the context dependent, but overall the idea remains same. To communicate with the system, we need these input and output devices. Now, the important aspect of making the communication, we need that information is going to process with the system and outside world that is utmost important that how these input output devices are going to behave. Now, uh, in simple terms, if we are talking about that uh, input devices are providing the signals and or data received by the system is being taken up in that sense, then after processing, the outputs are again the signals or data sent from the system. And that, that actually relies the whole concept that these input and output devices are nothing, but they are piece of hardware. And these piece of hardware are basically being required in terms of making communication, maybe between human and device, that means the user who is interacting with the system, or sometimes maybe the device to device communication. They are going to read it out, the data, and, and pass on the data for processing. Now, if we are talking about simple human device interaction, that we can take an example of simple keyboard or a mouse. Now, once the user is going to make use of the system, he has to provide some input for processing. And there, we are having these keyboards and mouse which are giving the input to the system. Now on contrary, we have the monitors, we have the printers. Now they are, after processing, going to display the output. Now that, that output could be in terms of uh, visualization from the uh, monitor or it could be in a hard uh, copy form through the printers. And then uh, if we are talking about device to device communication that we have modems, we have network cards, which perform both the input and output operation of the system. So at any point of time, we understand that it is about the signals which are being processed by the system and those systems, those signals are actually taken care by the system as input device or output device. Now, question arises that what type of data is actually being sent to a computer for the processing? Now, we discussed it earlier that it is about the digital form, the data is transferred. Now, here the role of transferring that data is being taken up by those input devices. That means the input devices send data from the device, maybe they are using a cabled transmission or maybe they are using the wireless transmission, but at any point of time, the digital form of data is being sent to the system for processing. And here we have the important concept uh, that um, not all the uh, input output devices are actually going to perform the operation with the speed of CPU. So we need some intermediate mechanism which would be able to handle the speed mismatch. Now if we just take a simple example of uh, computer mouse, now the data sent to the computer is basically being at which precise location we are moving the mouse cursor. And that is being taken care by the X and Y axis movement on the screen. Now, it is again, if we are just talking about the data we are sending uh, from the keyboard 
that we say I'm just typing a uh, letter A, then we have discussed that this letter A is actually being converted to a uh, byte form. It, it, is, it is simple, the eight bits, which actually being transferred from that keyboard to the system for processing. And then that would be after processing, that would be shown on your uh, monitor. Now, this is the part of your input device, but how the output device works? Now, once that we take the same example that we have given the input from the keyboard, like I want to type a letter A, then the signal is being passed to the processor and the processor will process that what they want to do with that input. And after that, the task is to display it on the output. Now, the keyboard letter A is being sent by the input device, that is the keyboard to the computer for processing. And then this signal is being sent back to the monitor as an output device for display. Now that means monitor is receiving the signal and displaying the output that is letter, letter A on the screen. But the important concept is that even if there is no output device, the system is going to perform the same way. System is actually process the data and it is ready to display. I mean, it may be your monitor, it may be your printer that depends that what type of the output device you want to see, you want to check the output. But the idea remains same that the system is going to process it and to see the data, we need an output device which can use it. Now, at any point of time, these output devices are not sending anything back to the computer. But if they do so, then what we have discussed is that those devices would be termed as input output devices. That means they are performing both the tasks. At one point of time, they are taking the input and at other point of time, they are showing the output. Now, how we can actually use these input devices? So it depends that how the system is taking the input from the user. Now, there are a number of ways. Now, it may be a manual input from keyboard or console. Now, you know that most of the time we are performing different uh, browsing over the internet using our keyboard, right? So at that point of time, all the inputs are being given through the keyboard itself. Now, there may be mouse. I mean, we are, we are making some drawing and then we can make use of these mouse to uh, point the cursor at different locations. Then we have another way of sending the data that may be in terms of analog inputs from instruments or sensors because system is able to process the information given to it. Now that information may be in terms of some music file, right? So it is directly being connected to a digital keyboard and it is, it is, it is being sent to the system for processing. Now on the other hand, it may be some, some sensor data. We are taking it from the system and we are going to process it to show some output. And then we have the usual data from the storage devices. I mean, we are, we are storing the information on our secondary disk and we want to make use of that data for processing, uh, writing down some program or it may be performing some, uh, some application or watching a movie or even browsing anything. For that purpose, we need to have some information which is being stored on our devices and we bring it back to our main, main memory from by virtue of these input devices. So that can be your pen drives, that can be your CDs, floppy drives, hard disks, I mean any, any device we can use for this purpose. Now, now, this is the one concept that what we understood so far is that, okay, we need some input devices for sending the data and information for processing. But at the same time, how these things are actually taken care by the system because it is not directly being done as such because we know that the, the speed mismatch is very much in terms of the input output devices and the processor. And other thing is being that, that we have the data in different formats, which is not directly understood by the system. So for very that reason, we have some input output interfaces. Now generally, these are the interfaces through which these devices are directly connected. I mean, we call it the electronic module inside the system and generally we refer them as device controller. Now, they, these input output interfaces or input output controller or sometimes we call it the peripheral input output controller, they are having a specific purpose in terms of providing an interface between an input or output device and the computer. Now, that means these controllers are very close to your CPU. They are actually in part and located on the motherboard itself and then 
they perform the task. I mean, a very simple example, if you can take about the input-output controller, about the speakers, multimedia computer system, they directly connect it to a device controller. We call it the audio card. And that, that does all the intermediate steps of performing and moving the data from input to output. Now that means these input output interfaces are basically being required for the smooth interaction that is being needed by the system. And for that we have those IO controllers. Now basically the purpose of these IO controllers are to supervise and synchronize that what is going in and what is coming out that all those transfers are being taken care of by those controllers. Now because we know these peripheral devices are mostly uh, performing and giving the inputs in terms of either electromagnetic or electromagnetic ways. And we know that our CPU and memory are purely electronic devices. Now in that sense, we have to map them appropriately. Another thing that what we have just discussed that it is about their transfer rate of peripherals. I mean it is very slow for the case of these devices compared to your CPU. So we need some mechanism which can actually synchronize and we would be able to get the data uh, in in efficient manner. Then we know that the data codes and formats of the peripheral devices are different, differ from the word format being used by CPU and memory. So again this mismatch is being handled by those controllers or interfaces. Also the operating mode of these peripheral devices are different and for that reason also the control is going to take care that there should not be any conflict amongst these devices at the time of operation. So they should be independently working with each other. So we, we just try to understand that for the purpose of these input output devices, we are connecting them with the system through some physical device. And we call them the hardware port or peripheral ports. Now they are basically some hole or a connection which is being found at the front or back of a computer. Like probably you have seen it that once we have a port for external devices like printer or maybe uh, your modem. So we would require the ethernet connect connection that is LAN or network port RJ45 being there, used there. And then we have the LPT port for the printer port that is being used for the purpose of the connectivity with these hardware devices with the system. Now there are another port, we call it input output port. Now basically these input output ports refers to the computer port itself, itself. We call it with the interface that are capable of sending output and receiving input data. Now they are not, not physical, I mean they are logical. And these are generally being referred as IO address or input output port and memory address sometimes. And they are used by the software to communicate with the hardware. Generally, there are large number of these memory ports are available. I mean, for uh, internet connectivity, we, we understood that TCP, UDP, and all those ports, we have heard about them, right? So we need to configure to, to access those devices, right? And these input-output ports. But we need to take care uh, a very important cognizance over there that we should not share the same port with another device because that would lead to hardware conflict. And we come across with this problem a number of times when we are connecting for the uh, internet purposes of our system and it says that there is some, something which is conflicting at that point of time and is not letting us to use the internet properly. So I mean if we want to see these uh, IO addresses in Windows we can directly make use of the device manager. Now that is, that is basically we understood the concept that how we are going to deal with these things. So, uh, we understood by now that what is the distinct, distinction between the input and output devices. So basically these input and output is any software or hardware device that is designed to send and receive data to and from a computer hardware component. Now we all also understood by now that input devices are meant for only sending data and they cannot receive any data back. Similarly the output devices like your computer monitor is, are meant only to display information but they are not going to send the data back. And, and another thing being there that there are certain devices which are combinedly being used at input output devices which are performing both the operations, right. Now IO devices or we, what we call it with the input output devices, now these are the devices which can accept input and also display output. Now. These are referred to IO devices because they are performing both operations and, and most of our secondary memory devices like your hard disk, uh, 
um, like peripheral devices, they are I.O. devices because they move data in and out of memory. Now we come across with uh, one particular error while making use of these devices and we call it with the I.O. device error. Now because most of the time these I.O. devices are the storage devices, so we encounter this error because of one or the other reason that the operating system is not able to read or write the device at that point of time. So there may be number of reasons for that. I mean we can troubleshoot it, but, but what could be the potential reasons for it? Now it may be we have the right protection on a SD card. That means it is not allowed for the writing purposes. It is allowed only for the read purpose. And we try to access for the right purposes, write more at that point of time, it will fetch us an error. Now it, another thing would be that we want to write on a particular CD or DVD, but that is not writable. It is only a CD, not CDR. It is not recordable. So we may get an error. Now we need more space, right? That, and then once we are trying to access the space, the system is not having that space for access. Now we would get an error for that, right? Sometimes we get an error that the file is being used by another program or user. Now this is another error for the IO devices. Now we may be talking about that there is bad or missing drive, which is not preventing us to access a particular drive. So these are few of those issues which are being there with these input output errors. Now how we are going to troubleshoot because this is a very general tendency once we are using our system that we should be able to see that how we can actually mitigate them. Now in that case the first thing the general IO troubleshooting idea is that reboot your system. Now another thing I mean if, if it is not being resolved that there may be certain driver issues with your system and for that reason we may require that the latest driver should be uploaded or updated with the system. Now we can also check the errors through the device manager because in the Microsoft Windows we have the provision to see all the devices which are connected by port or by address, right? Then we may have the I/O errors as what we have discussed that it may be a write protection error or maybe the media error, right? And then sometimes we come across with accessing a network file. There we may have a permission error or the connection issue. It is sometimes we are not having the right to access a particular device and we may end up with an error like we are we want to use some Wi-Fi devices and for that it prompts us to write down the password but we may not have it so we are not having the right to use it or file may be in a lock mode. Now let me quickly get into that what are the different input devices we may have before going into the detailed parts of it. So uh, generally we use that any device which accept or reproduce information that is an output device but once we talk about that input device are those which cannot accept or reproduce information I mean they are not going to output anything on from the computer so input devices are simple maybe your keyboard maybe mouse which are taking input and send that data for the processing to the computer it may be a microphone that we are receiving sound generated by an input source and sent to the computer we may have a webcam now we are using the webcam for uh, different purposes where we are receiving images generated by a pointed at uh, and send those images to the computer. Now similarly we have the different output devices. They cannot accept data from a user and then only send data to another device. It may be a monitor which receives data from a computer and display that information as text or images for user to view. We may have a projector. Now it is actually projecting the computer output and display it maybe on, um, on a surface or on a wall on a screen. Then we may have a speaker. I mean we are going to uh, listen to what the sound is being given from output as an output from the system, right? And then also we have certain I.O. devices like our CD rewritable drive or DVD rewritable drive or maybe a USB flash drive. I mean most often we are using these drives for the purpose of storing and retrieving information. Right, and uh, these are the different things that we generally use from our system. So this was all for the basic introduction to input output devices and in next unit we will be discussing about uh, in detail these devices. Thank you.